<laughs> what is intelligence in your view? So I have, of course, a definition. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you're going to say because you could have just as easy said, I have no clue. Which many people would say, <laughs> but I'm not modest in this question. <laughs> um, so the the informal version, um, which I worked out together with Shane Lack, who co-founded Deep Mind, is that intelligence measures an agent's ability to perform well in a wide range of environments. So that doesn't sound very impressive. And but it, these words have been very carefully chosen, and um, there is a mathematical theory behind that, and we come back to that later. And if you look at this this definition by itself, it seems like yeah, okay, but it seems a lot of things are missing. But if you think it through, then you realize that most, and I claim all of the other traits, at least of rational intelligence which we usually associate with intelligence, are emergent phenomena from this definition. Like you know, creativity, memorization, planning, knowledge. Um, you all need that in order to perform well in a wide range of environments. So you don't have to explicitly mention that in a definition. Interesting. So yeah, so the yeah, consciousness, abstract reasoning, all, all these kinds of things are just emergent phenomena that help you in uh, towards so, uh, can you say the definition again? So mul multiple environments. Uh, did you mention the word goals? No, but we have an alternative definition. Instead of performing well, you can just replace it by goals. So uh, an, uh, intelligence measures an agent's ability to achieve goals in a wide range of environments. That's more or less equal. But, but it's interesting because in there, there's an injection of the word goals. So we want to specify there, there should be a goal. Yeah, but perform well is sort of, what is, uh, does it mean? It's the same problem. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of gray area, but it's much closer to something that could be formalized. Are, in your view, are humans, where do humans fit into that definition? Are they general intelligence systems that are able to perform in, uh, like how good are they at fulfilling that definition, at performing well in multiple environments? Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, the humans are performing best among all species, species on Earth. we know we know of. Yeah, depends. It, you could say that trees and plants are doing a better job. They'll probably outlast us. So yeah, but they are in a much more narrow environment, right? I mean, you just you know have a little bit of air pollution and these trees die, and we can adapt, right? We build houses, we build filters, we we um, we do. Yeah, geoengineering. So, so the multiple environment part. Yeah, that is very important. Yes. Yeah. So that uh, distinguish narrow intelligence from wide intelligence, also in the AI research. So let me ask the the Alan Turing question: Can machines think? Can machines be intelligent? So, in your view, I have to kind of ask. The answer is probably yes, but I want to kind of hear what your thoughts on it. Can machines? be made to fulfill this definition of intelligence to achieve intelligence well we are sort of getting there and you know on a small scale we are already there um, the wide range of environments still missing but we have self-driving cars we have programs to play go and chess we have speech recognition so that's pretty amazing but you can you know these are narrow environments but if you look at alpha zero that was also developed by DeepMind. I mean, got famous with AlphaGo and then came Alpha Zero a year later. That was truly amazing. So uh, reinforcement learning algorithm, which is able just by self-play to play chess and then also Go. And I mean, yes, they're both games, but they're quite different games. And you know, there's, you didn't, don't feed them the rules of the game. And the most remarkable thing, which is still a mystery to me that usually for any decent chess program, I don't know much about Go, uh, you need, um, opening books and end game tables and so on to and nothing in there nothing was put in there especially just with alpha zero the, yes. the self-play mechanism starting from scratch being able to learn uh to actually new strategies is uh yeah it, 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 it re rediscovered you know all these famous openings within four hours <laughs> by itself <laughs> what yeah. i was really happy about i'm a terrible chess player but i like queen gambi yeah. And Alpha Zero figured out that this is the best opening. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> somebody proved you correct. <laughs> so yes, to answer your question, yes, I believe that general intelligence is possible. Um, and 
Um, it also, it, I mean, it depends how you define it. Do you say AGI, so general intelligence, artificial general intelligence, um, only refers to if you achieve human level or is subhuman level, but quite broad? Is it also general intelligence? So we have to distinguish, or it's only super human intelligence, general artificial intelligence. Is there a test in your mind, like the Turing test or natural language or some other test that would impress the heck out of you that would kind of cross the line of uh, your sense of intelligence within the framework that you said? Well, the Turing test well, has been criticized a lot, but I think it's not as bad as some people think. Some people think it's too strong. So it tests not just for a system to be intelligent, but it also has to fake human deception. Deception, right? Which yeah. is, you know, much harder. And on the other hand, they say it's too weak, yeah, because it just maybe fakes, you know, emotions um, or intelligent behavior. Um, it's not real. Um, but I don't think that's the problem um, or a big problem. So if if we would pass the Turing test, um, so a conversation over a terminal with a bot for an hour. Um, or maybe a day or so, and you can fool a human into, you know, not knowing whether this is a human or not, that it's the Turing test. Yeah? I would be truly impressed. And we have this annual competition, the Loebner Prize. And I mean, it started with ELISA, that was the first conversational program. And um, what is it called? The Japanese Mitsuko or so. That's the yeah. winner of the last, you know, couple of years. Yeah. And it's well, quite impressive. Yeah, it's quite impressive. And then, Google has developed Mina, right? Just just recently, that's an open domain conversational bot, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yeah, I kind of like the metric that uh, sort of the Alexa price has proposed. I mean, maybe it's obvious to you, it wasn't to me, of setting sort of a length of a conversation. Like y you want the bot to be sufficiently interesting that you'd want to keep talking to it for like 20 minutes. And that's a, that's a surprisingly uh, effective in aggregate metric because you really like nobody has the patience to be able to talk to a bot that's not interesting and intelligent and witty and is able to go on to different tangents jump domains be able to you know say something interesting to maintain your attention yeah, maybe kind of, many humans will also fail this test okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that's un unfortunately we set just like with autonomous vehicles with chatbots, we also set a bar that's way too hard, high to reach. Uh, I said, you know, the Turing test is not as bad as some people believe, yes. but what is um, really not useful about the Turing test, it gives us no guidance um, how to develop these systems in the first place. Of course, you know, we can develop them by trial and error and, you know, do whatever and, and then run the test and see whether it works or not. But um, a mathematical definition of intelligence gives us, um, you know, an objective which we can then analyze by you know, theoretical tools or, or computational, um, and you know maybe even prove how close we are. And we will come back to that later um, with the IXC model. So um, or I mentioned the compression, right? So in, in natural language processing, uh, they have achieved amazing um, results. And um, one way to test this, of course, you know, you take the system, you train it, and then you you know see how well it performs on the task. But a lot of um, performance measurement is done by so-called perplexity, which is essentially the same as uh, complexity or compression length. So the NLP community develops new systems and then they measure the compression length and then they have ranking um, and leaks um, because there's a strong correlation between compressing well and then the systems performing well at the task at hand. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for them um, as, as an intermediate uh, aim.